Hello, hello. <clears throat> hello, good morning. Good evening, good afternoon. My name is Chris Legaspi, <clears throat> and today is Thursday, May 21st, 2020. And today we're going to continue the um, uh, mini business uh, lecture, uh, live stream on um, how to get paid to draw, to be an artist, make more money as an artist. <clears throat> and today I wanted to continue the discussion from yesterday and um, um, talk about something that um, I think is very important to most of us watching here or any artists in general is how to get more clients, how to get more work. Specifically, how to get freelance clients. It's something um, that I have done and and consistently do. It's it's something that uh, is is very necessary, no matter what stage you are. And it's something a lot of artists <clears throat> uh, ask me for advice and for my thoughts and comments. So that's what we're going to cover today. And. Um, if you're watching me live or on a replay, thank you for joining me. Comment below if you're um, if this is your first time. Uh, where are you uh, located, and what time is it for you? I am currently in in Thailand. I'm an American currently living in Thailand. So today, um, what I'm going to do today is first we're going to review some of the uh, the major points from yesterday. Yesterday. I briefly introduced some uh, business concepts, specifically what I consider to be the process of becoming a successful paid artist. There's a linear process that um, everyone has to go through. Then I talked about uh, some mindset ideas, and uh, then we got into a few specific uh, tactics. <clears throat> I know the mindset stuff can be... A little boring and a little, you know, a little, a little foo foo. You know, it's um, but it's very it's very necessary. I'm going to try to make it as uh, as useful as possible. So what I'd like to do is uh, I'd like to begin with um, some mindset ideas, philosophy, principles. And then, and then go into the specific uh, tactics. So first, let's review what we talked about yesterday. So what is the process? Is there a process? I would argue, yes, there's a process. This is my uh, Photoshop whiteboard here. Oops. Eventually, I'd like to do these uh, streams standing up. That would be ideal. It's more um, you get more more energized. The more fun when you stand up. Okay, so what is the process? Process begins with you. And it ends with. Ends with success, whatever that means to you. And there's two things that need to occur to get to success. So 
So success could be um, you want to get a job in the industry. Success could be you want to be a freelance artist. You want freelance clients. Success could be you want to draw comic book covers. Success could be you want to draw or you want to paint uh, oil painting portraits commissions. Um, so whatever that means to you. Now, um, as we examined yesterday... This is uh, equal. Oops. Equal. It's a big, a big equal. So, in order for you to get to here, you need to develop uh, yourself. which is uh, step one, right? Develop yourself, develop your attributes. Uh, for artists, our main attribute is skill. For artists, our main attribute is skill, right? That's the base of the pyramid. Your drawing skill, um, especially if you're in more into the realism side, um, which is uh, quite difficult, you know, being in that camp myself. Now, um, <clears throat> presentation is how you how you present yourself. So that could be anything from a portfolio. That could be from an online profile. That could be um, to an in-person meeting. How you look, how you dress, how you talk. You know, are, are you rude at an in-person meeting? Are you cold and, um, what's the word, uh, antisocial, you know? Um, that's all presentation. Um, and then you multiply that times people. So people could be the number of people and the quality of the people. So if, let's say, um, you're, you're like, you have a clear end goal, success to you means you want to be a movie poster sketch artist like me, you want more work. Well, if you have a clear, the clear people, like I mentioned before <clears throat> on this channel, is that the people you have to reach are basically art directors, designers, and um, the managers that work in these studios. So um, if you just... If you have high level of skill and a decent website, if you reach enough, you'll probably end up end up getting work. That's really um, that's 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 uh, in in terms of volume. Now, quality of people could also mean, um, let's say, uh, quality of people could mean uh, a warm contact, someone you know at the company. It could also mean. Um, Um, uh, someone in a position of power, like a uh, successful artist or an art director, versus someone lower on the chain, like you know, like uh, like a secretary or a part-time office worker, right? You know, you know the CEO versus a part-time office worker. So it could be the quality of people where they're at that could help you also multiply your eff efforts. So that's a formula, and, and this goes along with today. We'll talk specifically today about the attributes and how we can use this process to get more clients. We want to first carefully examine where we are, take a, take a hard look at ourselves, where we are on the scale. We're going to look at our attributes. We're going to look at our presentation, and then we're going to look at uh, the people. And I think today, um, if we have time at the end, I'd like to get to how to reach out to people, because I think um, uh, this is this is something that I've seen um, done very poorly. Is actually how to how to make first contact, second, 
Okay, so that's um, that's a bit of re review and kind of where we're going today. And um, let me draw our little pyramid here. Let's say on the pyramid, this pyramid represents where you are in the process. This area has to be skills. So that's one of the main things. Specifically in your, if you're more into the realism side, so if you're watching me, you probably are. Um, you know that um, out of all these things, your, present, your website, the people you contact, and you know um, the number one factor to determine how, you, how quickly you get to success, your end goal, uh, is your skill. So um, in that sense, you, know, you, you already know um, that, but you can control that. That's one thing. But today I'm going to talk about a specific way, you know, m maybe, um, you know, because we, uh, although skills is the foundation of what we do to get work, um, that could mean different things for different people. I mean, we all don't have to draw like Bujuro. We all don't have to, um, um, you know, full color acrylic paintings like uh, Drew Struzan, you know, or we all don't have to, um, um, you know, have. Um, I mean, we even if we are realists, we we all don't have to have. To, to to have a technical side for lack of a better phrase but that there's there we'll, we'll, we'll talk about a different way to look at this so um, skills is the foundation but there's there's more to it than than that to get your end goal excuse me for a minute and um I really appreciate uh, your guys' comments here. I'm going to um, uh, take a break periodically and, and read your comments. So um, first, let's start with a mindset. Last, or yesterday, last episode, the, um, the mindset that I wanted to, to discuss was... Um, it's not about you, meaning to think outside of yourself. I think a lot of artists tend to um, be self-centered. I mean, not in a negative sense, but, you know, we spend a lot of time alone, spend a lot of time, you know, doing this, uh, including me, sitting at home, just drawing, getting in the zone. Um, so we don't really understand that um, in, in terms of the business side and the money-making side, uh, exchange of money doesn't happen Exchange of money doesn't happen until somebody, somebody um, receives some value for you. So it's actually you. What you, what makes you valuable? The reason why pe people pay you, hire you, buy your drawings and your paintings is because it's valuable to them. So if you look at it as as that, you're yes, you're developing your skills for yourself. But in terms of the actual exchange of the money, it comes when you give value. To someone else, and as artists, our value generally the artwork we produce. So it's not about you. Start to think outside of yourself. Think about how you add value to someone else, an organization. You know, if you want to work for a studio, you're adding value to an organization. Um, just, just, just like me in the field. You know, um, I know specifically why why I'm there and why they pay me. Um, you know, I know my. Sp the specific chunk of value that I add to that organization, to that ad agency, to that movie poster process. Or when I worked in games, I was doing concept art. I knew exactly why they I, why they were paying me to sit in there in front of a computer. You know, I, I knew specifically the value I was offering to that organization. <clears throat> so it's not about you. Start to think outside of yourself. Now today, today. 
the thing that, and this goes to, um, I'm calling this the, um, uh, the five lessons I would teach to my younger self. You know, I'm, I'm over, over 40 now. If I can go back to the very beginning when I first started to pursue uh, work, first started to pursue professional work in commercial art, I got my first uh, paid job when I was 19. I, um, there was like a handful of lessons I would go back and teach myself. One of them is to, to uh, focus outside of yourself. The other lesson is to think long term. So today's uh, mindset, today's principle is to think long term. And I, when I mean long term, I think I say as long as possible. Minimum five years, 10 years, 20 years, ideally, or more. And if we look to, um, if we look to actual business people, you know, we you know think of very wealthy, successful people throughout history or alive today. You know, some names that pop up. Uh, um, who are below? Who are some wealthy business people that you can think of? Uh, Elon Musk comes to mind. You know, he's all over the news now. Um, you know, to the, the the company that he formed, he you don't just wake up and go, okay, today I'm going to start a company. You know, it's something that that you think about for a long, long time. Uh, you know, and people in general who are who are more, um, you know, pe people who who th that's that's their gift is to build wealth. You know, if you think about wealthy families and generational wealth, they um, the people who who built that wealth, you know, they 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 think well past their lives. Actually, they think about their children and grandchildren, so they're thinking way past twenty years, fifty, one hundred years or more. So how does that apply to us as artists? One is that um, it's always good to have a clear idea where you want to end up. So maybe, you know, you're not quite sure where you want to be 20 years down the road. I, I'm sure, I, you know, when I was 19, I, I had a little bit of an idea, but not really, you know, it wasn't very clear. But it does, it, but Clarity is is power. Clarity is power. It's part of of this part. You know, this part of the graph, the you. Cl clarity and, and knowledge of self. So knowing who you are and where you want to be. Because obviously, if you don't know where you want to be, um, the, you know, you're you're not going to be able to get there. So knowing where you want to be will allow you to focus your efforts and your practice time. That's just one benefit. So, for example, if you um, clearly want to be the best or successful comics cover artist, and let's say your idol is Alex Ross, Alex Ross, you know, um, now you have a clear idea like, okay, that's how I want my career to kind of look like. I want... My work to kind of look like his, at least at that level of quality. And you know, you have an idea of how long it took him to get there, to where he's at, or at least maybe to where where would you want to be, you know, to in your equivalent in your timeline. So knowing that, now you kind of know every day, all right, well, am I going to um, go outside and do abstract landscape paintings? Not if that's your vision, right? Not if that's your long-term goal. So that's just w one example. So think very long-term. So for example, if I was... Um, um, if I was to go back and tell myself to think long-term, I would... I would probably have made a few different decisions. Uh, you know, when I was 19, I got my first break. And um, after, uh, after two years, I quit that job. So imagine being 19, no college education. You know, I'm already, I'm already a video game artist, and I was learning 3D at the time. And I quit that job for, for not the smartest reasons, um, but, you know, it felt right at the time. So, you know, looking back, I probably would have, would have done that 
uh, differently. If I was able to think long term and go, okay, this decision will have this kind of consequence in my life, and if I want my end goal to be, um, you know, now I have a much different end goal. And that, my end goal was to, at that time, my end goal was to be a um, a video game. Uh, uh, excuse me, uh, an, an animator, a character designer or some kind of animator to do art for animation. That was my dream growing up and then eventually led me to video games and things. So um, I probably would have made different decisions and um, at the very least, it does help to um, take take the time to get to know yourself, um, get to know, you know, what... What do you want out of life? Because a lot of people, they think, well, I, um, um, oh, I, I, I want to be an artist. I, I want to make money. I want to do freelance work or um, whatever. But they don't, you know, they don't, uh, they don't know maybe like what that, how that will affect their daily life, how that affect their family, their relationships, their daily life, where they have to live, you know, if, Maybe your goal is to work on uh, video games, you know. Um, but you know, if your goal is to work on video games, but deep down inside you want to, you know, travel the world. You want uh, uh, to uh, travel the world and and you know do do photographs and write travel blogs or something like that. You know, working for a video game company is, is not going that, that doesn't match. So, um, I guess what I'm trying to say is that take the time, even if it's five minutes a day, you know, um, you know, I personally have a meditation practice. Uh, we're not going to get into that today, but it does, it does help. You know, I, I, I make the time to sit in quiet, to reflect on myself and where I want to go. So now, you know, um, I've had this practice now for over 10 years, oh, almost 50, over 15 years now. Um, you know, now I have a clear idea where I want to be uh, 20 years. And, I, um, you know, i got to push myself to look past uh, that that 20-year mark. So take the time to get to know yourself and kind of look down the road. So don't and, – and look – first look to kind of how you want your life to be, what you want your daily life to be, and what kind of – and as artists – Start to think of what kind of work do you think would still excite you? Would still you'd still be doing twenty years from now? What kind of work do you want to develop? You know, like for for me, I um, I want to be a a, a, re, a successful realist painter, and I know that um, um, I'm going to be doing that anyway. I'm going to be doing that any, anyway, probably for the rest of my life. I do it every day, well, almost every day, but, you know, I do some kind of art every day. And I know 20 years down the road, I'll still be doing it. So I might as well, I might as well arrange my, my life and take and start to move towards that in a way that's meaningful. Because, you know, you, whether you're a, you reach your end goal, let's say you want to be a full-time realist painter, you want to do gallery work. You know, you could live that way, you can have that life, and be broke and anonymous. Or you can be a full-time realist painter and um, have shows, you know, have have a following, have collectors, have, you know, be in magazines, you know what I mean? So why not take a moment to imagine what what it is that you want to be doing that would excite you and give you joy every day? And what that would look like twenty years from now, and and uh, I hope, hope that makes sense. It's um, you know, it's uh, I, this is the first time trying to explain you know these business concepts. I've been reading books for for, for a decade now, taking classes and workshops from business people, and I'm trying to, you know, I'm, I'm trying to word all that stuff into artist language. So for, forgive me here, but start to think long term. And start to think not only what kind of life you want to live, but the kind of art that will excite you long term. And that will affect your daily decisions. And that will affect um, that will affect what you do 
uh, every day, and that'll affect, you know, let's say 20 years down the road, you want to be as successful as Alex Ross. <clears throat> For example, you know, your your five and 10-year goal is going to look much, much uh, different than if, if, you know, than someone else who had different goals. But something to keep in mind, think long-term, think about the life you want to live, how you want to live it, and the kind of work you want to be making in 10 or 20 years. There, I, I summarized it. All right, so now let's get into uh, specific um, tactics today, um, how to um, how to get more clients. So comment below if if you're watching me live or in replay. Um, comment below if you are already working. Let's say you have some freelance clients already. You've done illustration. You've done a, a portrait commission. Maybe you've drawn pets, pet commission. You've done some covers. Comment below if you've uh, already done some freelance type of artwork. Right, let me check the uh, chat here. All right, got some great questions. And um, comment below if, you, um, if you're brand new. Let's say um, you're new to art or you're transitioning into art. And you, you want your first client, you want to have your first paid job, or maybe you want to break into an industry, comment below. Okay, we've got some great questions here. Thank you. Okay, so how do we get more clients? How do we get more clients? Well, let's go back to the formula. Now, <clears throat> let's say our goal pyramid. Let's say our goal for today is freelance art work. And we don't want to just have one or two jobs, right? We want, we want to be very clear, consistent, abundant, abundant. Yeah, comment below if you want consistent work. Imagine, imagine you have so much work, you're turning, you're turning it away. You know, I, um, I draw uh, movie posters, um, mostly freelance right now. <clears throat> and the number one guy in my industry, his name is Mike Butkus. Um, I spoke to him on the phone recently, and uh, well, not recently, a few months ago before all of this stuff happened in the world. And um, he was telling me, like, oh, uh, God, I'm so busy. I had to turn away, like, seven jobs this month. And I was like, oh. <laughs> I was like, what's up, Mike? Give me a call, man. <laughs> I was like, shoot, I wish I could turn away seven people. Oh, my goodness. He said, I had to turn away. <laughs> it's like... I was like, damn, I'd be happy if I get seven. I mean, you know, in, in our line of work, of one, um, you know, for me, one is um, uh, typically one, one job. Fortunately, one job can last um, a few days and it pays, pays quite well. <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, that's what we want, right? So we, if we think long term, we don't just want one or two jobs. We want, we want to turn work away. So how do we get there? How do we get there? Okay, so the base of the pyramid is skill, right? Now, skill can mean different things for different people, like I was saying. What, to me, another way to think of skill is 
is value. My Photoshop whiteboard here. Think of skill as value, meaning how are you valuable to a potential client? How are you valuable? You know, m m maybe, maybe you can't draw like Bougereau, re realistic like Bougereau. Maybe you can't paint super fine detail like a Jerome. Maybe you can't do gigantic grand uh, figures like, like a Rubens, right? Maybe you can't do hyper-realistic uh, acrylic paintings like Rockwell or Leyendecker. <clears throat> maybe, but what you have may be valuable to a group of people. So here's where we start to take inventory of, all right, what, who, who am I? Who am I and how am I valuable? <clears throat> so, um, I'm trying to think. Let's say, well, the second thing is reliability. Let's say, um, Maybe um, you can't draw realistic, but man, your colors are are incredible. You know, maybe, maybe um, your colors and the way you design shapes. The first person that comes to mind is um, uh, Peter Chan. He goes by Pixel P Chan on um, on Instagram. Comment below if you know Pixel P Chan. You know he he can't draw like Bougereau. He, he probably could if he wanted to, but you know his colors are. Our, our next level, right? Or maybe um, maybe uh, you're good with software. Maybe you're just like a you crush with Adobe Illustrator, or you crush with um, a Photoshop. Maybe you're a Photoshop wizard. You can manipulate photos and layers and all these things. Um, so that could be a part of your skill set or how you are valuable. So um, or maybe. Um, you can't draw figures like like Bougereau, um, but you can draw animals like 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 a boss. You can draw faces of dogs or cats. So you, you know what I mean. I think I think a lot of people who 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 watch me, um, you know, come come from the realist side. You know, are into New Masters Academy and realistic art, and they think, oh, I I my work doesn't look like Steve Houston. My work doesn't look like like. Um, like like Rembrandt, you know, I, I'll I'll never I'll never I'll, I'll never make it this. But it doesn't have to. What it has to do is it has to just all it has to do is be of high value to a bunch of people. It has to be value to a bunch of people. So one thing you could do is um, is well first again this goes back to self inventory. Start to think about okay maybe I can't draw like a bougie row. Maybe I never will. Maybe I can't do detail or paint like Lion Deck or Rockwell. But there are some things that I'm naturally good at and I love and enjoy. So whatever that is, you got to find it. You got to own it. So that's step one. You got to find it. So take a, take a minute to take a hard look in the mirror. Look at yourself. Look at your work. And, and you already know what you love doing. And if you love doing it, so it's probably it's something you should stick to. You know, for me, I... I I like drawing figures and faces, so uh, you know. Obviously, I that's something um, I I, um, I I continue to do. So wh whatever it is, and maybe it's maybe it's not figures or faces, not realism, but maybe it's design. Maybe you you have an interesting way of drawing proportions. Maybe you have an interesting way of uh, of doing line art. Maybe you your your hatching or your pen work. Is great. So um, find out what it is about you that you love and enjoy, and see if you um, you know because that's that's how you can be valuable. And also take an inventory of some of your other skills. But but here I'm going to talk specifically about freelance art, freelance art, and I'm going to speak from from my point of view as a uh, someone who's made money, um, you know, more on the illustrative entertainment side. 
So what is it about you that makes you valuable? And what is it about your work that makes you valuable? We don't all have to draw like Bougereau <clears throat> uh, to be of value to someone else. Now, there are people who want to people who want artists whose work is of a high realistic level, right? High level, high high technical level. Okay, um, but if you know if you know right away that 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 is not you, um, then that's good. And then the the power is in the knowledge because once you know what's valuable to you, then you can go to the next step, which is presentation. All right, so let's talk about presentation. Excuse me. Um, so presentation. Presentation is, um, for most artists, is a portfolio. But um, but there's more to just having a portfolio. Um, specifically to me, it's it's. The one thing that I see uh, over and over again, and I've seen in myself, and I constantly critique myself, is is your presentation, your portfolio, is it is it clear? Is what you're saying about yourself, how are is it clear? Are you presenting your value clearly? So, for example, let's say I want to draw. Uh, portrait commission charcoal portrait commissions right if i have a bunch of pen sketches of superheroes on my instagram or maybe 60% are pen sketches of superheroes and then you know a little bit of of realistic charcoal portraits what 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 kind of message are you saying to the people that you want to that you that that you want to reach are you going to reach the people that find that value, probably not, right? You, you, you may if if it's good, you know. If you're, if again, if your skill level is high, a lot of this is is moot. You know, we 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 do have to rely on the skill part, as well. Um, but um, portfolio alone is not enough. I would argue that you want to make it. A very clear now you may say oh Chris I like a bunch of things I like to draw superheroes and I like to do realistic charcoal portraits and I like to paint still lives and um, I would say fantastic all of those things can complement each other and all those things can help you build your value but um, as far as presenting yourself and presenting your worth to the market now we're talking business here you know if you were a, a a product on the you know that that's that, that's something of value to a customer who's going to give you money to a client, you know you got you got to present yourself in a way that's very clear so the so the the client understands. Okay, this person has exactly what I need. This person is the value that I want to exchange my hard-earned money for. So the solution to that is to have multiple portfolios. Um, without a doubt, without a doubt. Um, um, like, for example, uh, for me now, I, um, I, um, I have a separate, um, on my main website, drawwithchris.com, it's more of a, a teaching site, and I do have a portfolio there, and it, it is admittedly a bit, a bit, all over the place, but I do like block it off in the sections. You know, I have a separate uh, movie poster uh, website. Boom! Uh, just ju it's just that it's very clear, very specific. And um, eventually, um, when I want to pursue gallery work again, you know, become a full time painter again, I'm I'm gonna not. It's not gonna be called Draw with Chris. It's gonna have, have my own thing. Uh, very clear, very specific. So. Um, um, make sure that your portfolio is very clear, very clear, and you you'll 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 know. And if if you don't know, you um, um, you you know you 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 know if it's all over the place. So again, it goes back to, and how do you know if it's you know? And then if you're like, well, I, I don't know, what 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 I can't choose. Well, then it goes back to, 
what I mentioned earlier about thinking long term. So step back and, and take some time to reflect on who, who you are and the kind of work you want to do 10, 20 uh, years or down the road. And that might help give you some clarity. So presentation um, should be very, uh, very clear, very singular, uh, very focused. You know, I mean, if you treat, if you think of yourself as as a product, you know, we're, we're not products, we're, we're artists. But you know, if you think of yourself as 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 um, as a, a thing that someone is looking for, you want to clearly communicate to that person that hey, I am that thing you're looking for. Hey, you who's looking for. Um, illustrated magic gathering cards. Hey, look at me. I, I'm, I, yeah, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'm what you need. Let's, let's talk. All right. So, so be very clear, very, very specific about your portfolio. Your portfolio is your, is your message. Really, is your message is your brand. And then you know, there's also other things like your social media profiles. But that's a, that's a whole other chapter. That all that stuff. Two it does it does come come into play. Um, <clears throat> so be very clear about your message. Your portfolio is a message, so you want to be very clear and specific. Okay, so the last thing we're going to talk about is uh, people, and then I'm going to break for questions. So if you're just joining us or you're watching on replay, um, we're talking about the um, today's topic is how to get more um, freelance work and have an abundance of freelance work. And we talked about a little bit about the mindset, but specifically how how to um, how to um, evaluate what your strengths are and then. And then make sure that you you communicate clearly what those strengths are. So now let's talk about um, people. Now, people. The one thing that the one thing that um, we can all control is the number of people. Right. If you're applying for uh, video game work, you just if you email enough companies, if you you know what I mean, if your skill level is high, your portfolio is clear and specific and you email enough companies, you're probably going to get some work. So that, that's good. Um, uh, but the one thing that does take some finesse is the who and the where. So who refers to the quality of the people. Now, um, obviously, we all know as artists that art directors generally um, generally make the decisions of the hiring. Um, maybe there's some art directors watching now on replay. Comment below if you uh, had some kind of art director or manager position. Uh, art directors make the decisions. So obviously, we, we want to reach them. Now, we also want to reach... Um, um, if you want work for specific companies, you want to work for HR people, human resources, hiring managers. Um, when I got my job at Cryptic, uh, Cryptic Studios, it's a game company in, um, it may have changed their name now, it's a game company in the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, the person who contacted me was a hiring manager. They had a full-time hiring manager. <clears throat> Um, so hiring manager may be someone that you want to get the eyeballs of. And it's also other successful artists. So how, um, how, do we, how do we, first, how do we find these people? And how do we, how do we reach out to them? The one thing um, that I always um, believe is that... Um, you want to uh, model success. So part of your self-reflection is, is to, when you start thinking about where you want to be 20 years down the road, you know, probably a few 
famous artists come up to mind. You know, for me, it's Asaro, Houston, Steve Houston, John Asaro, uh, Ben Oliver, like right now pops in my head. You know, these are guys whose careers that I want to, uh, Mike Butkus, you know, these are the kind of guys whose career I want to model myself. So what you can do is um, find these these artists that that you admire, that you want to model yourself, and look for who they contact, their network, their direct network. And um, chances are a lot of them will know directly uh, hiring managers and um, uh, art directors and also other famous artists. Because let's say you can't, you know, let's say, uh, for me, let's say um, that the most famous poster artist, the most famous person in my industry is Drew Struzan. Maybe I can't call him on the phone, but guess what? There may be somebody within one connection that I could reach. Maybe um, Drew Struzan knows an art director that knows the hiring manager that works with me at uh, one of the studios I work at. So I could build a relationship through there. Or maybe Drew Struzan knows... Um, um, he might know Steve Houston, right? So I could, you know, make a co contact there. Um, and um, so uh, that's one way to to reach out to artists is to try to find a um, a connection, you know, because a lot of times these these successful people, these busy art directors, you know, they're they're busy and they have lives, and you know, they may be like, oh, well, Chris, why, why would they want to talk to me? I'm some I'm some peon. You know, I'm some nobody. Um, the answer is they, they they won't. But but if but if you build a relationship with somebody close to them, then that could be your in. And then we will we could talk about how to build a relationship because that's that's an art in itself. That's an art in itself. And I'll quickly go to that. So people, number of people we can control, but the quality of people will take some finesse. I would start with the most successful artists. You have go to their Instagram and um, go to their Instagram and see who comments on their Instagram. Go to their LinkedIn, see who comments on their LinkedIn, see who's on their network. LinkedIn is a big part of um, at least the freelance art game and the movie poster game for sure. Um, and the second thing about people and finding people and getting your work out there and increasing the number of people is the importance of offline. The importance of offline. Um, now I know it's right now. It's it's May twenty twenty, and um, you know things are kind of shut down now. When things uh, reopen and group events start to reopen, um, this this you know hopefully hopefully. Um, this this will apply because um, um, for me, you know, one of the ways that I was able to be in this position where I'm at and to find a work is um, by going to meeting pre people in person. And for me, the the best way, and I always encourage people to do this, is is to take uh, classes. Uh, take classes. Take so. You know, one way to build a relationship with an artist that you admire is to take his class. A lot of famous artists, successful artists, they teach. Take their class. Um, now, obviously, not we all can't live in a major city or in a city that these famous artists teach at. Um, but if if you don't, you know, try try um, try to do that. Um, I, I definitely encourage it, and I know it, it can be expensive too, um, but it's definitely. Uh, worth it if you're serious about this. So take take their class now. Uh, the beautiful thing about and you know with the current world situation is many artists are going online. So there's more and more and more of these famous artists. Um, uh, they're teaching online now, so you can take their online class. You know, for example, uh, Craig Mullins just pops into mind. Craig Mullins is arguably the greatest digital concept artist of all time. He's the godfather of digital painting. He teaches online now, and you could take a Believe a Schoolism class. Comment below if, if anyone here is on Schoolism. You can um, take a Schoolism class with him, and you pay for, you can pay extra to get his critique or something like that. And I'm like, 
I mean, that, that's, 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 that's in. That's good. That's golden. So not only were you going to build up your skill, but you're going to build up the quality of people. So that's a win on this entire process. It builds up your skill and builds up your people. So take their class, whether in person is ideal or online, because obviously in person they can feel you. You know, if if you're motivated, if you're hungry, if you're uh, you know if you're friendly, if you're funny, if you have a good personality, if you're a warm person, if you're a generous person, they're they're going to appreciate that. They're going to want to work with you and and refer you. That's the goal. Um, in fact, I um, um, I mean, just a name pops in my head when I th thought the word refer is uh, Carlo. Arellano, comment below if you know who Carlo Arellano is. He's uh, he's an extremely world class designer. I would argue he's probably the best character design teacher in the world. And he um, he used to teach in person at um, um, a few places. I took class with him twice. Once was in Orange, in a small little startup school in Orange County, and once was in. Um, Orange County, California in the U.S. Once was in Concept Design Academy. It's a more famous school. And Carlo is famous for referring uh, referring his top students to work. I, two that come off the top of my head is an um, artist named uh, Ray-Ban. He uh, was an old friend of mine. He, uh, Carlo referred him to, a, uh, to an independent uh, concept art job. Uh, Ray-Ban was one of his students. He was an excellent student, excellent artist. Um, Joshua James Shaw, Joshua James Shaw, another great, excellent artist, successful um, artist uh, in entertainment world. He was referred by Carlo Arellano. Um, ah, there's another name. Uh, uh, I just pop, pops in my head. Carlo works at a game company called Vainglory now. He's like a founder and art director. And he's constantly like, if you follow his Facebook, he's like, hey, hey, I'm hiring. Hey, I'm hiring. You know, you know, he, he's, he's more, more than likely going to choose if he has 10 applicants, he's going to choose someone that he knew and met in person in one of his classes, you know. Um, I can't think of his name now. Um, but, but anyway, so um, what, what I'm saying is that do not underestimate offline. And the most, the most impactful thing you could do is to take a class from a successful artist, uh, working artist, I, ideally, um, like I mentioned yesterday, you kind of got to be careful with who you take advice from. Um, you know, I, I always, you know, I, I, I don't, I only, I only um, take classes from people who I want to be. Basically, I don't, I never go down or I never go across. Does that make sense? I, you know, I always go up. <laughs> so, um, um, so ideally, take classes. And the other way. Um, the other thing that I, I want to mention here is life drawing. Now, um, maybe you, um, um, well, well, first, let's talk about people who live in major cities because people who live in major cities can go to life drawing. Los Angeles is ideal. Maybe cities like Chicago, New York, other places like that. Um, you know, if you're serious, especially if you're in the realist game, you, you have to go to life drawing workshops. You, you have to. I don't think there's any way around it. Because um, not only, again, it builds up your skill, but the people there, um, you, you'll, know, you, you'll know when you meet someone successful there. Um, and pretty much any life drawing in Los Angeles will, um, will have a professional artist. Now you might be saying, oh, Chris, uh, come on, man. I, I live in India. I live in Thailand. I live, I live in Taiwan. I, I, I live in Chile. I, I can't go to these. We don't have life drawing. Or I live in a Muslim country, Chris. What do I do? Well, start your own. Start your own. Maybe it's not life drawing. Start your own group. Unfortunately, you have to be the meetup. And let's go to meetup.com. Let's just go to meetup.com. I love this site. Comment below if you have ever been to a meetup. Um, 
because, um, you know, when I first moved to uh, Thailand in 2016, I, um, there was a life drawing group, but they weren't, you know, they weren't that active. They weren't that serious. So I, I had to start my own. I had to start my own. Oh, my goodness. Did it just crash? Oh, come on. Damn it, I don't want to log into Meetup. <sighs> well, let me look for Meetups. Damn it. I was going to do a live search, but uh, let me see. Discover? Okay, here you go. Okay, here's Singapore. Oh, I got Singapore in my VPN. Let's look at life drawing. But you know, Singapore is too easy. Let's look at let's look at Argentina. Come on, Argentina. Um, Buenos Aires. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it's a country. Oh God, it's so embarrassing. Oh, see that this this unfortunate. If you live in Buenos Buenos Aires, you're gonna have to start your own. Let's look at um, let's look at Taipei. I I personally know a a, a drawing group in Taipei. Look at that, Taipei. Boom. Now, you know, you're probably thinking, well, Chris, uh, I'm not going to meet Drew Struzan at a Taipei life drawing. Um, but you don't have to. You don't have to. You don't have to. What will end up happening is that, you know, you'll probably cultivate your own your own group of clients, you know. If let's say you start a life drawing group, let's say you live in let's say you live in Buenos Aires, and you love new masters, you love realism, you love Bougereau, you want to be the best realist in Buenos Aires, um, and you start your own group, you know, let's say, you know, um, over time you start to attract five, ten, twenty regular people to come to your life drawing every week. Guess who's going to be buying? Guess who's going to be buying your your charcoal drawings? Guess who's going to be buying your your paintings? The same people that like what you have created. So um, sometimes what, what I'm trying to say is that sometimes you have to create the num the number of people we can control. Sometimes you have to create that number of people. And I have uh, the best example is my friend. Um, his name is uh, um, Art. Uh, Karen, Professor Art, uh, he's a Thai man. Uh, we became friends um, uh, since I lived in Thailand. He, he's a realist. He loves anatomy, and he was all alone. He didn't have he didn't have he didn't have any work. He didn't have any clients. He he want, his one of his role models was Ray Bustos, the new he's a famous anatomist. He wanted to have a successful career. He loved Charles Hugh. He loved Ray Bustos. He wanted to be like those guys, famous anatomists, famous art teachers. And, um, you know, there's no life drawing in Thailand, unfortunately. Um, I mean, there is. It's very, you know, it's, yeah, it, it, there is some, some of it, but not like the new master's style, the academic, hardcore academic style, structured he had to make it. He had to make it. And it didn't happen overnight, but, uh, and, you know, I'd like to have him on the show. He had to make it. And, you know, eventually, um, you know, the, the huge following he built, he has over, over a thousand, like, loyal local Thai art students and local artists and professionals. He has a huge network. And, you know, whenever he makes an anatomy sculpture, he sells it to the people that he built, to the, the audience that he built. 
Um, so, so anyway, that, that's a whole other topic, too, is how to build an audience. I, I wanted today to be more about um, how to find freelance cl clients if you're in a major city or if you have access to the industry. And I think that the short answer is, let's say you do live in a major city. Um, not necessarily, doesn't have to be a Western city. I know, I know the most successful freelance artist in, in Thailand, too. His name is Asuka. He, um, he, um, you know, you, um, you, you, you basically, um, you have to be of value. You have to be at value to the most influential people in whatever region you are. So you, you want to, you know, we all can't live in Los Angeles. We all can't live in New York, Chicago, or London, but, um, we all can, uh, you know, be uh, the most valuable person in whatever we do in our region. Does that make sense? Whatever region you are, you want to be the most valuable person for what, whatever it is you do. Hope that makes sense. Um, um, now, if, um, but yeah, that's... Um, that's really all I have to say is that don't underestimate offline. And the other thing is obviously conventions. My God, conventions. And if, if I have, um, I always recommend students to set up a table. Go to your local con when, when they start happening again. Go to your local con. Go to comic convention. Go to trade show. Set up a table. I mean, yes, you should go too. I've never set up a table, but uh, um, I, I, I should and I, I will eventually. S set up a table you know they can be as little um you know I, I had a former mentee his name is othel he has um tables at local comic shops and um you know i think they're around 100 to 100 dollars a day us dollars a day for for a smaller show as much as 250 dollars a day for a larger show but you know if you're selling you know you know, if you sell if you sell a thousand dollars worth of illustrations and commissions, um, that's that's a win. So that again, that goes back to to people. So uh, trade shows, um, Comic Con. You know, I I got a job at Comic Con. It was a fucking, it, it was a miracle. I, I got both hardcore rejected at Comic Con by Portfolio Review. I got my ass kicked and I got a job. So I got both of the hum, both experiences happened to me. So. Um, I, I got a job offer at SIGGRAPH back when I was looking for game game jobs. I got two, two, or oh, one. One job offer um, at SIGGRAPH is a video game type conference. I went with my portfolio and just showed it around, gave people some copies, um, I think, and one of them contacted me. So I always recommend going to conferences and trade shows. And again, those can be expensive. I know if you have to travel, um, but, but believe me, it's, 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 it's worth it if you are serious about this game. So, um, so I guess that's uh, what a, a, long, a long way of saying is do not underestimate offline in person. Do not underestimate it. In fact, in fact uh, I believe it was Jack Ma. Jack Ma is that famous Chinese billionaire who invented, um, who invented Alibaba. Comment below if you know who Jack Ma is. He... Uh, he was on stage and he said something to the effect of, oh, you know, uh, 10 years ago, the smart people would do all, would do their business online and network online. They were ahead of the curve. He's saying now the, uh, the people who are ahead of the curve because the internet is so saturated, now the smart business people, the smart networkers are coming offline. So and I, 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 I firmly believe there's some truth to that. And I, I I have seen it, you know, from my personal experience. So get get out there and um, you know, um, you know, take take advantage of the opportunities to meet people offline. All right. All right. So that's about it. I am going to answer your questions now. Really appreciate you guys. It's coming online. Excuse me. I admittedly, um, um, it's very late for me right now. My, it's, um, 
I, I should be in bed, so it's it takes my brain takes a, a few seconds to process the information this time of night. Uh, Malone from Texas. Hello, sir. Thank you for joining us. Walter Francisco. Hello, sir. Hello from Hong Kong. Dutch. Hello, Mr. Andrew. Hello. Kema from the UK. Hello. Welcome. Ted from Thailand. Hello, sir. Ronin. Hello. Excuse me. Richie from San Diego. Yes. Wonderful place. I should have been there. I bought a plane ticket to go to San Diego March 7th, but it got canceled. So I love, love me some San Diego. Good morning from Missouri. Hello. Wow. I believe you're the first Missouri. Oh, Andrew, I think you're the only Missouri person we have. Jawad says, hi, Chris. I just joined late. Can you discuss how to bill clients and how to invoice? Oh, yeah. I just use a, um, you know, I've been very fortunate. Uh, Jawad asked, asked a qu he asked, how do you bill clients and how do you invoice? What software to use? I so Software, I just use uh, Google. I Googled invoice template. I just use a generic template. In the past, I've used a Word document. I've been very fortunate that um, most of the, in fact, all of the clients I've had in the last 10 years have been very, very professional, very, very honest, very professionals. And a lot of them do that for me. A lot of them say, hey, um, um, do you have an invoice? You can use our template. A lot of, I've had a handful of them just give me their invoice template, so I just use theirs. And that's what, that's what I do. Typically, I... Um, um, when I finish the work, I just invoice the next day, and I said, oh, hey, here's my invoice, but my invoice is very clear. I, I keep a very clear track of hours, and I use Google Calendar for that. But thank you for that specific question. Carlos says, what you say is inspirational. Oh, thank you, Carlos. Dutch says, I have a, I have as book illustrator and own comics. Oh, he's talking about uh, long-term goal. Oh, that is fantastic. God, imagine publishing your own comic or graphic novel how satisfying would that be god that's a you know in fact um a lot of people don't know this about steve houston but steve houston um he's famous and successful as an oil painter but he um he loves 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 comics he wants one of his dreams is to make his own comic book believe it or not sports posters for team giveaways wow Oh, that is fantastic. We know what I like about uh, Ramon, Ramon Me Meja, excuse me if I mispronounce your name, says his dream is sports posters for team giveaways. That is so clear and specific. Uh, what I would do is Ramon is find out who the best is. You probably already know and try to get to know them. I would take their class or at least copy their work. Peter says, I've done pretty crappy comic book art as a freelancer. Oh God, yeah, I've, I did one pencil job. Not happy with it. Carlos says I'm on my first freelance right now. Oh great, yeah. If you don't mind, Carlos, can you share what that is? If you're not, if it's not too personal, Carlos, if you're watching, share with us what your current freelance job is. That's wonderful news. <clears throat> Gemma says I'd like some clients, but I'm not sure if my skill level is there yet. That's okay. Um, again, maybe. Again, skill is relative to kind of who you are. Skill is relative to who you are. So, um, you know, um, if who you are is a realist, then, you know, then that, that, that's one thing. But if you're not, it may be if you're not exactly want to be a realist like Bougereau or something along that vein, then, you know, you could be of value to someone else. But, but even not, you know, you know, I'm a realist, but... I, in, in my mind, one of the things that makes me valuable is my design. My design is is very good. It's very eye catching. So I think a lot of people, a lot of people hire me because my design is good and I'm reliable. So so um, so Gemma, um, that that shouldn't stop you, uh, uh, Gemma. I mean, definitely. Um, and skills you can control to some extent. Tomorrow I'm going to talk about ways to get faster. 
Andrew says, I've done a few concepts, freelance for animation pitches, but that was over a year ago, so I'm back to get the first client team. All right. Oh, yeah, those those are those are always good learning experiences, you know, doing free work. That's going to be an episode two is when to balance free work with paid work because you, you have to do free work in the beginning. Gemma says, I'm transitioning from another career. Oh, that's great. Oh, thank you for joining us, uh, Gemma. Justin says, do some freelance portraiture and concept work for small films. <coughs> Yeah, there's so many movies being made. Um, but it's getting it's getting in front of the right people. Peter says, thanks a lot for info regarding long-term vision. It's an essential thing in today's distracted world. Oh my goodness, yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, this world this is a bit of a mess. I mean, not just now, but in general. Yeah, and I think a lot of, uh, you know, the... The it is it's distracted, which again I think speaks to um, the idea of of coming, of connecting with people offline. You know when 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 the things start to relax again. <clears throat> I'm a beginner, but I'd like to make my own video game and make illustrations for metal bands as freelance. How clear is that? How clear is that? That's wonderful. You know, growing up, I um, I used to love Iron Maiden. Comment below if you know what Iron Maiden is. It's an '80s metal band. God, that I, I used to draw Iron Maiden like all over the place. That would be a fun job, doing metal band covers. I believe Peter Hahn. Peter Hahn also does freelance metal band covers for a few bands. He's a bit of a metal head. At least he was when I knew him. Andrew says that's the dream. Working more with less and less time for related art related work. Mm. That's the dream, Andrew and uh, Nathan. Making more time for art. And I think that's why it's to me all of this starts with the self inventory, taking time to get a clear picture of what your life what you want your life to look like. Cause some of us are single, some of us are young, some of us are older and have families or have mortgages and responsibilities and things like that. So you want to start to really think about how, you know, what would be ideal for all situations in your life and where your art fits in, you know. Um, that's really important because once once you're clear, then you can start to move towards it. Javad says, the freeze on our production in LA is going to be lifted in July, so client work should be coming up. I can't wait. Yeah. Oh, hopefully in July. Jesus. Los Angeles is a mess right now. Hi, Chris. How much do you charge for commissioned works? Uh, it depends. Do you mean paintings and charcoal drawings? I typically don't charge less than $500 um, for 8x10. Uh, 8x10 charcoal... I would charge five hundred dollars. That's just me. I mean, you could charge more or less. I don't know. Daniel says school is in rocks. Yeah, I agree. I admired that company. I used to go to Weekly Life Long in Hong Kong. Wow, it was great. I met a cartoonist. There you go. Blah blah. McCain says I used to go to Weekly Life Drawing in Hong Kong before the pandemic. It was great. I met a cartoonist for a local newspaper. A guy worked for Disney and more. Everyone was super nice. Boom. See, there you go. So that's growing the number of people. Dutch says, I know there are life drawing classes online when you pay $7 like that for a two-hour session with one mod pose. Yep, that is that is happening more and more. Jawad says, I had Carlo at CDA. He was rough with the critiques. Oh, okay. He was always told me it was tough with love, and that's what they work. Okay, so Jawad knows Carlo Arellano. He, yeah, he is a freaking savage, and um, he can fight too. He's, which is very scary, and he's into like knives and deadly martial arts. So if you take his class, he's, he's kind of a scary guy. Dutch says, "Agree." I took classes with Brian Lee to expand knowledge of the myth. Oh, wonderful! Yeah, Brian Lee's teaching online. I really love his work. Uh, 
Yeah, I wouldn't mind taking a class from him. I've, I've been meaning to. Didn't know if anyone's mentioned already, but Croquet Cafe and Video is free and it's source for life drawing. Oh, thank you, Brian. I didn't know they were free. That's great. If you don't have access to a real place, it's a good source. Yeah, I agree. I mean, we, we're all kind of stuck at home right now. So online is a good option right now. And, um, you know, if you're stuck at home and online, um, uh, Facebook groups is obviously a good way to meet and connect with people. Some college friends offered me commission works, but I denied it because now I don't have skills like professionals. Yeah, um, that's good, you know, because you want to be reliable. If you get a job and, you know, maybe your skills are okay, you're not confident or you're not fast, and you accept a job but you don't finish it in time, then that'll, that'll decrease your reliability. You, you don't want that. Reliability is a big part of your reputation. Nowadays, who are doing photorealism, getting more commissions? Come, people appreciate photorealism more. Yeah, could be. I think that's, I think there's a market for everyone. And I think that's one of the things I was trying to trying to connect here is that um, no matter what you're good at, what your unique gift is, what your unique skill set or unique interest, you know, there's probably a group of people out there who are going to find it valuable. So um, that's what I mean when I say we don't all have to draw like Bougereau. <clears throat> Carlos... Justino says, my freelance is for fantasy board game. All right. Creatures and magical stuff. Oh, that is fantastic. And congratulations. Carlos got some work. And in Brazil. That is so fantastic. Blah, blah. I had no idea Peter Hahn worked for metal bands. That's cool. He may not do it anymore, but he did. Um, I used to work with Peter at um, a game company uh, called Bottle Rocket. So he may not be doing that anymore. Probably still does. Um, I'm very anxious and nervous. It's my first paid job. Well, Carlos, you should, um, <laughs> yeah, you should be nervous. That's a good sign. Um, I would recommend um, uh, get it done. Get it done because um, in a lot of ways, reliability is, uh, sometimes reliability is a little bit more important than your skills. You know what I mean? Maybe your skills aren't, you know, maybe you can't draw like Travis Charest, uh, can't paint like Drew Struzan. Um, you know, you can't, you can't draw, you can't paint like, I don't know my Rockwell, but you are fucking reliable, you're fast, you're easy to work with, you're reliable. Um, the company will appreciate it. So that, that'll be a whole other topic too, is t how to balance uh, quality with speed, because reliability is 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 a is the one the one attribute that um is the one attribute that i had to develop and that i had to um i i, I paid a heavy price for not being reliable uh mr chin said india knows some artists who do abstract paintings those are sold in millions how do these things work i mean they look so simple yeah that's a, that's a whole other topic and uh, i'm not an expert on that um the whole abstract well, not abstract, but modern art is very strange to me. All right, so thank you for joining me today, guys. I'm going to cut out here. Tomorrow's show, um, we're going to talk about rapid skill development. So I'm going to share some ways that um, we can uh, develop our skills uh, quickly and show you the way that, that, that I do it. And... Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully it'll be more interesting than watching a my little whiteboard here. And if you're brand new to me and you want to get the next live stream schedule, you want to get free content, make sure to subscribe at drawwithchris.com slash subscribe because I do most of my I do most of my communication by email. So if you want to get a hold of me, you want to make suggestions for topics or ask me a question, um, make sure you subscribe to me at drawwithchris.com com slash subscribe and um, yeah thank you for joining me today and thank you for all your comments and questions and i will see you tomorrow at the next stream so until then take care